reduced brain glucose metabolism can be measured, you know, up to decades even before any Alzheimer's disease symptoms or dementia symptoms occur. Hence, you hear the term type 3 diabetes. Mm -hmm. What effect does breakdown of the blood-brain barrier have on brain glucose metabolism? That's another great question, and uh, ongoing studies are tackling this because it's not that clear and quite controversial. Uh, just to tell you a bit more, so uh, the main transporter of glucose at the blood-brain barrier uh, to make sure glucose comes to the brain is GLUT1. So that's a, pro that's a receptor, GLUT1, that has been found to be reduced in Alzheimer's disease. So people have looked at, again, post-mortem brain tissue bank, and looking at the microvasculature and uh, bigger vessels, and they found that Alzheimer's patients, they have much less GLUT1 at the blood-brain bar barrier, which means that there is less uh, uh, you know, potential of uh, the, the flowing uh, uh, glucose in the blood that to penetrate the brain. So that's one thing. And we can measure that <clears throat> with several techniques, but one of them is a very SPECT and PET, so positron emission tomography, and we can uh, measure what we call FDG, so uh, which is a, um, a marker of what people say, neuronal activity, things like that. So we know that when we inject that tracer, uh, it's fuel deoxy glucose tracer into a patient. Uh, if you have Alzheimer's and if you don't, you will have much less uh, FDG signal if you have Alzheimer's compared to a control. But what is interesting, and then there is a bit of controversy at how to to tell too much about this, but people are, are explaining this data, just saying that there's less neuronal activity and that's, that's all. But what they don't take into account is these people have less GLUT1, so there is less um, uh, uh, probability that the, the radio ligand, ligand will, will go, there's less GLUT1 receptor into the brain. So I think the FDG PET signal has to be carefully uh, uh, analyzed in the sense that it could be a neuronal activity, but it also could be indirectly the marker of vascular problems because of what I've just said. Uh, but again, there is experts in the PET uh, field that will tell you uh, uh, the reason why it is not and vice versa. It's very technical and I don't have that expertise. But, uh, but again, we know that there is less good quant with one independently of uh, the reduction of the vascular network in Alzheimer's disease. I think glucose is uh, playing a, a, a big role here and it, it's currently investigated. I don't know much more than that. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's, it's, I mean, it's very interesting and it certainly doesn't seem like it, the, like we have, you know, the consensus or, you know, on, on, on the answer to that question. Yes. I'll just mention, I, it's, I remember reading um, a couple of studies years ago where uh, animal studies where omega-3 deficiency caused a reduction in, in GLUT1 transporters in the brain. Uh, again, of course, omega-3 deficiency also breaks down blood-brain barrier, you know, yeah. so it's kind of um, what's first, you know, like is, is, is Always, the glucose, yeah. reduced glucose getting into the brain, affecting blood-brain barrier, is blood-brain barrier affecting the glucose transporters or both, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's it seems tricky to sort of figure out, but... Um, that's the chicken and egg question all the time. Um, same thing with, you know, with the, I mean, I'm not an expert on omega-3, but it's basically the same thing when it comes to pericide loss, endothelial activation, like pro-inflammation, breakdown of the barrier, loss of blood flow. What is happening first? It's always difficult to address those questions because in human, most of the clinical studies are cross-sectional. You look at one time point. Now... Um, I think there's more and more studies that follow individuals longitudinally with scanning, with uh, looking at biomarkers, looking at neuropsych testings. So we're going to get more answers very, very soon. So there's big centers working to that. But for the omega-3, yeah, um, I'm not surprised that you said that omega-3 deficiency leads to uh, a reduction of GLUT1. Is that what you said? Yeah, yes, it has been correct. Shot. I haven't read that paper, but... Um, but it goes well with what we said earlier, right? There is a vicious circle um, where um, I think it's likely that, of course, the endothelial pericyte crosstalk should be very, very involved in that uh, problems, in my opinion. And that's something I would love to, to study. 
I, um, I'll send you my paper. I wrote a, a, a sort of interactive review article back in, gosh, it must have been like 2018 or something, I think. And um, it was it was on the important role of MS, MFSD2A and omega three in ApoE four carriers, mm-hmm. and uh, I have references because I for for a lot of the studies like the the deficiency in omega three causing group one transporters to go down, and uh, so I'll I'll send you my review. You might well, be interested. In, in, of, of course, it's it's a little bit. Um, a, a little bit of a hypothesis sort of review, you know, so I review the literature, but there's a lot of my sort of uh, thoughts for, for people that are actually exploring the field because I'm not, I'm not doing these, these studies that, you know, so uh, you might be yeah. interested in that. And uh, um, it's just, oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, go it ahead. just rings a bell. Um, I, I just remember um, reading a couple of stories and it's uh, very relevant to what we do in the lab is that, yeah, omega-3, the fact that you give omega three to an, to aged animals, and I told you, what, as you age, you have pro inflammation, like like a, an hyper activation of the brain endothelium. Uh, and a couple of studies, I have given some omega three to the mice, and I remember seeing a reduction of one particular protein that I really like to study, and we are currently studying, is VKM one, vascular cell adhesion molecule one, and that. And, uh, and omega-3 was able to reduce these levels. And we know in the lab, we know that VKM1 plays a major role uh, upstream of pericyte uh, uh, detachment. So again, it, it's, um, there's a lot of things that can be connected. Uh, I think it's very interesting. And just another word on VKM1 is Tony Wiskore in uh, Stanford University, uh, one of the big lab working on proteomics and all these uh, fancy homics uh, techniques. He looked at Alzheimer's and um, and uh, healthy controls. Uh, he looked at their plasma and he has looked at using proteomics, looking at different proteins, which, which uh, Alzheimer's, sorry, and normal aging. And what he found, I think the most striking finding was normal aging. He found, um, I think, 30 plus uh, proteins in the plasma that were elevated with normal aging that were related to blood-brain barrier. And if you look down, I think f- uh, the top five candidates were uh, cell ad- um, proteins that are part of the uh, uh, endothelial cells, obviously. But the number one that stood out as the number one protein that is elevated with normal aging was soluble VKM1. So everything, um, uh, you know, <laughs> if you put some studies together, it kind of makes sense. Uh, there is a bit more to dig. But uh, I think it, it makes sense and it might go well with also what uh, omega-3, is, omega-3 is doing to the, to the vasculature. So that'd be nice to dig further. It's very interesting that you mentioned uh, Tony Weiss Corey as well, because uh, if I recall correctly, uh, he's also been involved in research where he's transplanted um, young plasma into, into you know, older mice. And Correct. it's sort of rejuvenated in the brain. And it's like, well, are there proteins? I think the opposite was done as well, where it's old plasma was transplanted into younger mice and it sort of accelerated. Yes. And I think if I recall correctly, blood brain barrier breakdown was part of that. Um, and yes. so it's like identifying those proteins that is no, causing I think it. He's, he's doing a fantastic work. And, uh, and yes, correct. Uh, he's doing, he's, he's looking at the, the, the proteins that we have in the young blood that will help not only uh, brain functions or anything like uh, to help not aging too fast, but also we found a few key proteins that are involved in uh, maintaining blood-brain barrier as we age. So I think it's very interesting. And he's using also the para parabiosis model where he can uh, link uh, age and young mice. But I think right. it's, it's very important studies. <laughs> 